The normal distribution is a commonly occurring continuous probability distribution. It's considered to be the most prominent probability distribution and is very important in statistics as well as natural and social sciences. With the student statistics package in Maple, we can generate a new random variable based on a normal distribution using the normal random variable command. We can give this with symbolic parameters mu for the mean as well as sigma for the standard deviation. Now if we right click on this we can do things like generate the probability density function. We'll generate this at a lower case x and there we have the PDF of our normal distribution. Let's talk a little bit more about the probability density function. Let me first declare a new random variable. I'm going to call this one a normal random variable taken from a distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So once we have this, let's now, as we saw before, generate the PDF of x. And we'll do this using the, the commands this time from the student statistics package. So we'll start with PDF of x. It's going to be equal to PDF command of x with respect to lowercase x. So here is the PDF for the normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So what, what does this actually tell us? What can we see with the PDF? So let's first plot this, just to get a better idea of how this looks. So here's a plot of our PDF. And what this graph shows us is the relative likelihood for the normal random variable to take on a given value. So what we're really doing is we're plotting out values which occur within this continuous distribution. And each one of these values, so here if it be values between one and negative 1 and 1, would occur with these relative prior, uh, probabilities. Now, the graph of this, of this probability density is, is known as the bell curve. And, and the reason for that is really that it exhibits this symmetry about the center with roughly 50% of the values on the left side and 50% of the values on the right side. So 50% less than the mean, 50% greater than the mean. And really, the, the result of this curve is, is what we would get if we were to start taking some random samples and, and generating values from a large normal distribution. We would basically see as we generate a large enough sample that it would start to approach this, this bell curve that we see here. Now the probability that this random variable falls within a range of values is given by the integral of the variable's density over that range. So say if we wanted to find if, f, if say x here was less than zero, what would be the probability? Well, all we'd have to do is just integrate under this line. And we can get this mathematically by integrating the PDF. And this is actually otherwise known as the CDF, or the cumulative distribution function for x. And we declare this as CDF of x is equal to CDF x, and we'll call this lowercase x again. So, so there's our CDF that describes our, our probability, our cumulative probability function. So again, let's generate a 2D plot of this. And I'll just zoom in a little bit on this. Just to show us some values between say uh, minus three and plus three. So really specifically, the CDF describes the probability that a random variable x has a value less than or equal to a value here, lowercase x. So if we wanted to find the probability that the uh, random variable has a value of zero or less, we can actually just read off of the CDF curve here. So we would just find zero, read up to 0.5, and that would mean that we have a 0.5 probability of being less than or equal to zero. If we go up to one, it's going to be less than or equal to roughly this term up here. And that actually ends up corresponding to roughly 68% or so. And this gets us into talking about the 68-95-99.7 rule, otherwise known as the three sigma rule or empirical rule. And it states that nearly all values lie within three standard deviations of a mean in a normal distribution. So let's do an example. I'll show you some examples now using our values from this normal distribution. 
And these examples should help to illustrate this rule. So as, as we said before, to find the, the values from, from uh, a certain range, what we want to do is just integrate between values in our PDF curve. So in Maple, this is pretty straightforward to do. We can just use things like the int command to integrate the PDF of x between values x minus 1 to 1. And I'll just put these in as decimals. That way we get a float value returned. And here we can see the value is 0.68. So that's values. How many, This is the, the proportion of values that fall between um, one standard deviation of the mean. Now we could also see this by looking at the CDF for this, uh, for this random variable. So say if we were to take the CDF of x at 1 and minus off the CDF of x at minus 1, this would actually return the same value to us. So what we're doing is we're just adding up the area between this here and this here. So we're just the, adding up basically this, the values from here to here. And this will return that same 68%. So following up with the 95, if we wanted to take, find all the values between two standard, within two standard deviations of the mean, we could again just do int of PDF of x from x minus 2 to plus 2. So we get the value of 95.4. And this is again the same as doing CDF of x of 2.0 minus the CDF of x minus 2.0. And lastly, we'll do the 99.7. So within three, three standard deviations of the mean, we'll just do this using the CDF again. CDF of x 3.0 minus the CDF of x at minus 3.0, so 99.7. So again, this, this is kind of a, a way we can verify that uh, this three sigma rule, uh, which states that nearly all the values, 99.7% of the values, lie within three standard deviations of the mean in a normal distribution. So now that I've showed you a couple of examples using the student statistics package and uh, using things like the sigma rule and so on, three sigma rule. Uh, let me jump over to one of our math apps. This math app is called the normal distribution math app. And, and actually, let's see what happens when we start to val change values for things like the mean and the standard deviation in the normal distribution. So I'll scroll down here to the bottom. I'm just going to set the sample size here to zero. And really what I want to show is I want to show how the plot of the PDF changes as we vary things like the mean and the variance. So we'll start by varying the mean, and here we'll just move the mean over. You can see that all this does is essentially just moves the curve over on our axis. So if we're at zero for mean, this has the curve centered at zero. If we move it over to two, the curve is centered at, zero, at two. The variance on the other, on the, on the other hand, you can see that as, as we work with the variance, as we bring the variance lower and lower, the curve actually, the values seem to kind of come together and uh, the observations should, are kind of clustering in closer and closer to the mean. And as we take the variance out to a higher level, the observations move further and further from the mean. So this is, a, this is a neat way of kind of going through. We can see how things like the standard deviation and the mean uh, affect the, the plot of the PDF. As well, using this math app, we can also do things like draw samples. And let's draw a large, fairly large sample. Let's start pulling this out. And we can see as we're sampling from, this is, this is just taken from a, another random variable distribution. But uh, I think this is a normal random variable distribution. We can see that as we, as we increase the number of samples, we get closer and closer to fitting the area underneath this, this bell curve. And if we change this math up a little bit more, let's just take this out to a much higher value. Let's drag this out to 10,000. We can see that we get closer and closer and closer to 
approximating that curve for the normal distribution function.